Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. What you see here is a box, it's solar panels, and uh, got a few other nice little trinkets to go along with it with five year warranty. It's Sun Force 60 watt solar 12 volt power generator kit. <laughs> Anyway, so that's what the unit will look like when it's done. Also, it comes along with a charge controller. Does not come with a battery. Does come with a 200 watt inverter as well. So pretty much it's all set up. If you've got a battery, you've got everything else you need, except for what you need to plug into the inverter, as long as it's under 200 watts and doesn't create a surge of 400 watts. People have asked me to do this for a while. The price was right. Actually, the price was wrong, but I checked it out on the web first, and I knew it was a company selling it, that if you checked on the web and you could find it cheaper, then they would drop the price down. So, I uh, got a sizable discount and made it worth the while to get it, and I wanted it for a while. Anyway, this cost me right at about $200, and it's 60 watts. Plus, there's a few extra things in it to play around with as well. So anyway, uh, in response to those asking me to show them how to set these up and how to do one, Maybe not the most cost-effective uh, kit. There are other places out there you can get them, probably cheaper. But this is all in one kit. It's all together, and it's all within power ratings of each other's parts that you're not going to blow anything out. So that makes it safe and uh, pretty reliable. We're going to go through the kit, show you what you get, and how to put it all together. Okay, inside the box, you'll find these two pieces. The triangle supports. Notice it has a flat side on one side. They are exactly complementary of each other. One should go to the outside with the flat side to the outside. The other one should go here. And they should stand, stand, <laughs> they should stand on the long edge. Notice on these, this one here, I'll give you an edge view of it. It's got a slot and it's also got another slot in it that goes this way and a hole. Now, I guess that's for a screw. There's no screws in this package. This one goes up on the top. To do this properly, I'll bring this into note for you. Right down here you see a little triangle inside here and it's got a little space right here. This piece here, if you'll notice, I'll turn it like this, you see it has an edge here. This goes like this, the solar panels slide down into it. And this slides, or let me do it on this side. This little slot right here, you can take right here and slide it right on down. That little triangle piece inside the framework helps stand everything up and support it. Notice on the triangle it has a stud here. This piece here has two studs, two studs, and a slot here, and a slot here, plus the slot is here. This should slide in here, slide down onto that stud, and the same thing on the other side. And our base framework support is now complete. A little wobbly. I guess once you mount it down it'll be okay and these shouldn't slide out. Okay, also included in this package is a 7 amp solar charge controller. 7 amps Mac. Panels will be putting out about 4 amps. This does not dump the load into a dump load uh, of resistors and disperse it as heat because basically it's such a low wattage and it's not a wind turbine charge controller. But this basically shuts the electricity off to the batteries when the batteries get full. It has two terminals here we're going to the battery on the left side here and on this side you see they where they've pre-stripped and left the insulation on one note to know when hooking up any equipment always turn the equipment off this does not have a power switch on it basically you can't turn it off the other thing is always hook up your positive first then the negative it reduces sparking and surges to your electronics and I would hook this up to the battery first then I would hook this up to the solar panels. The electrons are negative. That is your supply. Okay, and when you disconnect, oh, disconnect your negative first, then your positive. So, hooking up, it's positive, then negative. Disconnecting, it's your negative, and then your positive. Always remember that on all units. And turn things off before you start working with it. Also included in this package is a 200 watt inverter. It is a modified sine wave inverter. It's not pure sine wave and it's not a grid tie inverter. You don't plug this into your wall circuit and all that stuff unless you're completely off the grid and don't have wires attached to your house. And it comes with a DC 12 volt plug and a fuse on the side. 200 watt uh, modified sine wave inverter has a 400 watt peak current that's basically for surges or surge protection at the beginning. It'll basically run 200 watts continuous but if something takes uh, a little bit of uh, power to start up like some power equipment or, or motors they take a little bit of a surge to start them and you want to make sure that surge does not go above 400 watts. It might blow your fuse 
If it doesn't, it blows this. If the fuse blows, you, you get tired of the fuse blowing, oh well, get a bigger inverter. Don't replace this with a higher fuse. You replace this with a higher fuse and you try to start up a motor that takes a higher surge than 400 watts, it will blow your unit and you won't have one. At this point you're saying, oh come on Muddy, pull out the doggone solar panels. Well, no, not yet. They're made of glass, you, that's the last thing you want to handle and you take care of those. After you mounted your framework and all, then you can put the solar panels up. Well, we've got a whole bunch of electronic con uh, electrical connections here. That's a male plug with a 12 volt connector at the other end. 12 volt connector and a stripped end. We have a female 12 volt plug, quick disconnect, and then we have the 12 volt connector for that as well. Then we have the extension with the 12 volt quick disconnects. These are the three that go across the back of all three of the solar panels because the solar panels have these connectors on them. They're just exactly the opposite and this links in to this which goes in which would be going basically to the charge controller and then the battery. This is one for clipping to the battery and then you can plug things in that take the 12 volt setup. Then we got another one with the 12 volt uh, quick disconnects and alligator clips. The red is positive. Always remember red is positive and black is negative. Check your battery. If you hook something up backwards, electronics, semiconductors have a very bad habit of blowing and you won't have them either. So be careful at that. And last but not least, another quick disconnect setup and a green LED. This also, I don't have to open it to tell you, has a current limiting resistor show it to you up close here if I can get enough light on it and what the ends look like there we go without a resistor LEDs will blow especially if you have a higher voltage than what the LED uses and they were nice enough to include a solar charge controller manual a 60 watt solar 12 volt power generator kit manual and a 200 watt power inverter manual and it's in French English and Spanish English, French, and Spanish, Spanish, French, and English. The other thing they included was a telephone number, a 888 number, and a website for customer service. Okay, well, I got my solder and iron lit sitting over here. I have the long extension, and I find this tail here. This is going to go to the two wires going to my charge controller. And this is the three way splitter that goes to all three of the solar panels, and we'll plug into this end right now I need to get this connected to here this says V and E I'll bring that up a little closer V and E voltage E equals voltage when you're talking uh, when you go into formulas and stuff okay to do things right uh, I like to make uh, one of the wires shorter than the other that way the connections will never have a problem with touching each other I usually overlap them about two centimeters and I will take the di diagonal cutting pliers after I straighten the wires up that way they don't pull on each other more than they need to I'll cut this black one short throw that away and the red one I will cut that to this length now you see these will connect like this and I'm going to strip them back I don't like tinned wires before I solder. I like to overlap them like this. And the way I cut my wires, I use a razor blade. I take the razor blade, I push into the wire just a little bit. I'm not going to make it all the way to the wire. I'm going to get this to where it just weakens the edge of the wire. This is a pretty dull razor blade you push in all the way you break some of the strands of the wire and your wire is not very strong then pull it apart it will break if you have to then bend it back and forth don't twist this leave them where they're just fluffed out like that same thing on the other one to the same length right about there roll it on the razor blade pull fluff them out just a little bit same thing with this one measure your length right, cut your wire or use strippers but don't twist your wires there we are same length it's about one and a half centimeters pretty close to about three-eighths of an inch a little more than a quarter inch there we are 
The next thing you want to do is take the nice fat heat shrink without messing up the wires. Slide this back a ways. This is going to be your outer casing. Then you slide these two on. You see you can't mess these up. This is black and black and red and red and you slide these inside each other. Just push them into each other. Squeeze them down and then you're going to go ahead and solder these two wires. And you'll do the same on the other one. After you're done, you'll slide the small heat shrink on and then the big one. Okay. Now this is tinned and I'm not going to slide this down on here right now but I've got that and then the other one will slide over. I'm going to go ahead and do this one for you while we're on camera. This ought to work out real nice because it's got the other one to hold it in. Slide these into each other. Squeeze them down just a little bit. Soldering iron. Make sure that hole is not burning up my other wire. There we go. I've got it tinned. Always clean your soldering tip first and you shouldn't have that much problem. Now you notice I didn't put a lot of solder on that. I'll take this all the way around. Both sides. If I can get a hold of my needle nose pliers here. All them little strays, I just squeeze them in. Now that they'll bend, they have something solid to stay to. And finish it off. I'm going to start at this end of it, right here. Hit it with a decent amount of solder. That other end is just cooling now. And I hit this end, and the whole thing shines. We're now done with that. Quickly slide the heat shrink over both of them. Uh, my solder and iron, I got the option taking that off. Now I can relight it again as a torch. There we go. Turn the heat down. Well, I guess I can play with that. Move it kind of fast back and forth. That heat shrink will heat up and shrink right up around the wire. There's no way these can touch. Even if somebody, if it got smacked down and smacked, it's, uh, it's actually better than this here, especially once I put this full piece down here. And I'm going to slide that Set this down for a second before I burn something up. Take this heat shrink and I'm going to slide it all the way over the outer insulation of the other one. And now I'm going to heat it up. And that is a professionally, professional grade heat shrink complete connection that should not fail and should last you a very long time. I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Many good things to you and yours. Okay, I've got the camera backed up. This goes to the negative post of the battery. This goes to the positive post of the battery. Hook the positive up first, then the negative. And then, this all runs through. Your charge controller is hooked up to the battery. You're safe. You won't be overcharging your battery. And you need to hook this to all three of them solar panels. And that, my dear friends, is what this pigtail here is for. And we've got it connected up to here. We're fixing to go set up the solar panels. The sun is coming up, and that means we get to do some testing and show you what it can do. I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind, and other home energies. Many good things to you and yours.